Holy Trinity Church is firmly within the Cathedral Precinct, at the centre of Coventry. Its now restored, elegant spire rises to 237 feet, compared with 295 feet for St Michael's ruined Cathedral spire. The two churches are very close together, and both are close to the new cathedral. The main entrance, the west door entrance to Holy Trinity, is in Trinity Lane, just off Priory Row and Broadgate. The first reference to the church is in 1113. This structure was destroyed by fire in 1287, then rebuilt in the late 13th century. Most of the church is late 14th century in the perpendicular style. Looking around the outside of the church and moving along the south side via cathedral lanes, one sees the steps which were an entrance to a first floor Jesus Chapel, now long gone. The spire sits beautifully over the church as seen here from the south side. At the top of Cathedral Lanes is the replica of the Coventry Cross from Broadgate, seen here against St Michael's Ruins Spire, and here against Holy Trinity and its spire. Continuing into Cuckoo Lane around the east end of the church into the north side in Priory Row. The north porch is considered to be the oldest part of the present building, constructed as the 13th century prior's entrance to the Norman church. This reflects the fact that Holy Trinity was the parish church for the lay tenants of monastery lands. St Michael's church, close by, was the parish church for tenants of Earl Leofric's Coventry lands. Moving inside the church, we have here the vaulted ceiling of the tower under the spire. The current spire was rebuilt after the first one blew down in a gale in 1665 and was finished in 1668. Looking up the nave, we have the early 15th century font sitting on what is thought to be a base of a market cross. Above the nave can be seen the famous and rare medieval doom painting of the Last Judgment, dating from about 1430. Moving along the north side comes the Archdeacon's Chapel, used formerly as a consistory court. The north doorway represents the oldest part of the church. The pew lighting units shown in these slides were made by Coventry's Francis Skidmore, famous for his metalwork on the Albert Memorial in London. Here we have the so-called tall chair, made in 1833 for the vicar's friend, who was a Scottish bishop, so that he could be carried into the church and avoid setting foot in it, as was the rule at the time. Elizabethan stone coffins from the Archdeacon's Chapel. Marla's Chapel with its half-finished roof. The money ran out. The east window of the crucifixion dates from 1956. It was made by Sir Ninian Comper and replaces one blown out in the World War II Blitz. 
The sanctuary, much altered since the Reformation, was redesigned in 1854 to 1856 by Sir George Gilbert, who added the Minton tiles. Whilst the altar screen is 19th century, the piscina and sedilla are all 14th century. The choir stalls on the south side have some impressive misericords. Looking down the nave reveals the dramatic Great West Window, made in 1956 by Hugh Easton. Holy Trinity has a magnificent stone pulpit, dating from around 1400. In addition to the pulpit, there is a magnificent early 15th century brass eagle which has survived the Reformation and subsequent Puritan Revolution. Another gem held by Holy Trinity is the Bishop's Bible of 1568. It is damaged on the outside, but on the inside it is very good. The Bible was one of the early English translations designed to convey the Bible to the congregation in a language they understood, and was part of the work towards the King James Version of 1611. Moving back towards the west entrance, behind the font, on the south wall, is a long stone bench for use by members of the congregation in the days when the nave had no furniture. These wall seats give rise to the saying, weakest to the wall. Thank you.